Good afternoon, everyone. Thanks for joining me for my Managing Editor Live webinar on how to boost your engagement on LinkedIn. But before we get started, I wanted to thank Mary Ellen and her team at Managing Editor for inviting me to speak to you today. I hope that we have a little fun and that you learn a little something in the process. Again, my name is Courtney Sparkman, and I'm CEO and founder of OfficerReports.com. OfficerReports.com is a software company that provides software to security guard companies and internal security teams around the globe to help them manage their security teams. When I first started growing Officer Reports back in 2013, I started with the usual business development pursuits, you know, networking, cold calling, and emailing. But none of those avenues yielded the success that I was looking for. So kind of on a whim, I started using blogging and social media to gain attention and hopefully get some traction. And everything just kind of took off from there. After having great success in blogging and posting those articles to social media for several years, I decided to try my hand at posting video to social media and found the magic combination of video and LinkedIn. Since we're talking about video, let's kill this PowerPoint presentation and do some video. As you all know, or if you didn't, LinkedIn currently has over 610 million members, of which 303 million are active monthly users. To make LinkedIn even more attractive, 40% of those 303 million users visit the site daily. And to top it all off, 90 million senior level influencers and 63 million decision makers are actively on LinkedIn as of today. With that being said, in terms of social media networks, LinkedIn is where it's at for professionals or B2B companies. If you are a professional whose goal is moving up the corporate ladder, or if you're a B2B company looking to grow your business, LinkedIn is the place that you go. The only challenge is that with so many people on the platform, it's hard to be seen unless you've got killer video content. So let me walk you through how I create my video content. Let's go. Welcome back and let's get started. So here are the four topics that I'll be walking you through today. Equipment, post-production, content, and social media distribution strategies. So let's talk about the thing that everybody wants to ask. What type of camera is best for my videos? And the answer is the camera that you have. Way too often, I've talked to people who are afraid to start recording videos because they don't have the right camera. Nowadays, your typical smartphone camera is all that you need to get started. In fact, my very first setup consisted of an iPhone, a phone holder, an inexpensive stand, and a microphone, all purchased off of Amazon. But before we talk any more about video, let's talk about the most important aspect of your video, your audio. George Lucas, you know the guy that does those little space movies, said that sound and music are 50% of the entertainment in a movie, 50%. So let's give it a try. I'll keep the video as is, but show you what bad audio does to your video. With everyone in the world doing video conferencing, you know the feeling that you get when that one person on the line has a bad connection and you're thinking, oh my God, please hang up and reconnect. So how was that? Awful, right? But let's flip it and degrade the video and leave the audio the same. With everyone in the world doing video conferencing, you know the feeling that you get when that one person on the line has a bad connection and you're thinking, oh my God, please hang up and reconnect. As you can see, even though the video is not that good, it is still much easier to keep your attention with bad video than it is with bad audio. With that being said, let's talk about what you need for good audio. When I recorded and published my first video, again, my rig was pretty simple. 
It was my iPhone, a lightweight tripod, and a Rode Video Micro. Generally speaking, Rode is a good brand for all of your audio needs, ranging from $50 up to several hundred, depending on what you need. For shooting videos where the camera is close to you, the Video Micro is an excellent choice that will give you audio that is vastly superior to what you'll get from your smartphone or your camera's internal microphone. As I said earlier, the best camera to use is the one that you have, and most people have smartphones, so use them. When I first started seriously getting into video creation, I heard a video creator say that about using a smartphone, and I was a bit skeptical. No, I was a lot skeptical. But it turned out to be true. Unless you're doing videos that you want to get nominated for an Oscar or something. I mean, that would be cool, right? But that's not the purpose of this video. We're just talking about lengthy. Just to prove the point, check out this video from a professional videographer. This is a Canon C200 cinema camera that shoots in cinema raw. This is an iPhone XS Max that apparently is one of the best video cameras on a cell phone. You ready for this? So I stripped this entire camera down so I just shot with the brain itself and a lens on the front. Now I shot in Canon Cinema Raw Light, so it is a raw format that is shot inside this camera. And I shot in C-Log3. Now with the iPhone, what I've done is I shot with the camera app that is built into this. So no extra settings at all. Let's take a quick look at the two different files as they came out of the camera. So this here is the C200 in raw, then I did a color grade that looks like this. And this is straight out of the iPhone app. And this is what happens when I added the color grade to that. So right off the bat, personally, I am super impressed with how well this did. Now, it see what I mean? It's almost impossible to tell the difference. So to keep your budget small, just stick with your smartphone initially. Or if you already have a point and shoot camera or a DSLR camera, you can use that too. Again, when you're getting started, the best camera that you can use is the one that you have. Since I got started, you know, umpteen years ago, I've upgraded my cell phone to a Canon 90D only because I'd gotten to the point where I wanted the uh, ability to be able to customize my camera settings and use some specific lenses for some specific effects. Okay, let's talk about lighting. Where do I even start? There are full courses in film school devoted to lighting. On any film or video production, there are usually half a dozen people focused on lighting. But fortunately for you, I'm not gonna make you go through years of the trial and error that I went through to figure out the most important points for lighting, of which there are two. First is three-point lighting, and the second is diffusion. When it comes to video creation, there are really two types of videos that you can do. The first is vlogging. With vlogging, the camera comes along with you uh, while you're moving and talking about whatever subject that you're talking about. Uh, with vlogging, you're kind of at the mercy of the lighting uh, in the environment that you're recording in. This would be an example of vlogging. The second style is the locked off type of shooting that you would be doing from your office or your home office. In this style of shooting, you can completely control the lighting in your environment, which can give you a, a much more dramatic video. A vast majority of B2B videos are shot in the locked off style. This style of shooting is used for providing commentary on any given topic. Uh, it's great for product tutorials or providing information about your company, as well as doing interviews with other people, which I absolutely love. In the locked off style of shooting, content creators, which is what you are now, 
will generally speaking use three-point lighting to light their videos. For a really good explanation on three-point lighting, check out this short video. In this lesson of Frameforest Film School, we're going to show you how to use three simple lights to do a three-point lighting setup. So if you want to light a headshot or maybe an interview, this is going to show you some of the basic lighting principles to make your shots look better. In three-point lighting, there are three lights, a key light, a fill light, and a backlight. In this video, we will also show you some tips on adding more life to the background. Well, let's get started. Here we have our talent in front of a black background in the studio. We are going to start off by turning off our lights in the ceiling. Then we're going to turn on our first light, the key light. The key light is a 650 watt tungsten lamp with a diffusion gel to make the light softer. The key light is the strongest light in the setup and is our main light source. The key light is placed at the side of the camera in a 20 to 45 degree angle. The second light is our fill light. The fill light fills in darkness and shadows on the opposite side of the key light and gives much more even lighting. The fill light is normally only up to 50% as powerful as the key light. You can achieve this by using a less powerful light, move the light further away from the subject, or adding more diffusion gels to it. Here we turn our fill light on and off to demonstrate the effect. The last light in the three-point lighting setup is the backlight. The backlight is placed behind the talent and creates a kind of halo effect around the edges of the subject. The backlight is separating our talent from the background and is highlighting the contours. Here we turn our backlight on and off to demonstrate the effect. So this is the three basic steps in creating three-point lighting. But in addition to the three lights to light your subject, you can also light up the background to it to make the picture even better. So what we're going to do here is add a bright 2 kilowatt tungsten lamp with a colored gel on it to make a splash of color on our black background. So here you can see now we added a little bit of blue color behind her. By using the barn doors on the lamp, we can kind of shape it into a shaft of light, which is a cool effect. Changing the color and shape of the background light, you can create different moods for your scenes. And here we turn our background light on and off to show the improvement to the shot. Let's take a look at some before and after shots. So this was our talent with just the natural room light from the ceiling. And this is after. As you see, three-point lighting creates much more depth in your shots and creates different moods. Next, let's talk about diffusion. Diffusion is just a fancy term for making light softer or more appealing. Here is a short explanation of the differences between soft light and hard light. Hey, it's Matt from the A-Team, and today we're gonna go from this to this by diffusing our light. You ready? Let's go. Last week we talked about light placement. This week we're gonna talk about light quality. That refers to the brightness, specular highlight, and the shadow roll off. And this is all done by modifying your light. Simply put, there's hard light and soft light. Hard light is achieved by using a small light relative to your subject. This creates harsh shadows. For example, the sun, while it is huge, if you look up in the sky, it's relatively small to you. Soft light, on the other hand, is achieved through a relatively big source compared to your subject. This creates a nice blurred line between the light and shadow of the face. For example, your phone is super small, but when it's right next to your hand, it creates a smooth transition between light and dark. Soft light is measured in two different ways. First is the distance of the transition between light and shadow. This is called fall off. Hard lights create hard edges, which is called fast fall off. On the other hand, soft lights create blurred lines, which is called slow fall off. The other way is highlights. This is when a light source is reflected onto a subject. Depending on the reflectiveness of its surface, you'll either see a bright highlight or a dim highlight. And usually, the softer the light, the softer the highlight will be. Overall, a soft light is more preferred over a hard light because it simply looks more pleasing to see on a subject. Some lights are naturally... So the next setup we have is a softbox, specifically a light dome 2. 
The cool thing about this light is it comes with two sheets of diffusion built inside. One inside near the center and one out here. And they give you a super nice clean layer of soft light. Again, when it comes to getting the right lighting, not only can it be complex, it can be really expensive. But don't worry, I've got just the product for you. The soft boxes that I started off with, I purchased on Amazon for less than $70. Uh, that kit served me well for a couple of years before I decided to upgrade to the big boys. The other option for lighting that many content creators use are ring lights. With ring lights, you can dial the brightness up and down, and it gives you that really cool light reflection, also known as a catch light in your eyes. Ring lights are relatively inexpensive, and you can purchase them right off of Amazon. Now that we've talked about some of the equipment and how to capture your video, let's talk about how to get that video out of your device and onto your preferred social media platform. In this case, LinkedIn. Generally speaking, I guess you could export your video file from your device and upload it directly, but you'd be missing out on an opportunity to take your video from good to excellent. In order to get to excellent, you'll want to take your video and import it into uh, some video editing software. And there are dozens of different brands of video editing software. If you ask the professional video editor what video editing software they're using, you'll probably hear many of them tell you uh, something like Adobe Premiere Pro. Adobe Premiere Pro is a very robust video editing software, but I can't recommend it for beginners. There's way too much going on there to easily do what you need to do to get a video published. But if you're an Apple Mac user, your computer probably already comes with a really good video editor in iMovie. It's not as sophisticated as uh, Adobe Premiere Pro, but it definitely has the functionality to get your videos to level 10. For you Windows users out there, there are a lot of options, none of which I have too much experience with, other than Camtasia. Camtasia is pretty similar to the video editing software that I currently use, which is ScreenFlow. Uh, as a software company, we needed to, uh, a way to capture and show how to use our security guard management software which ScreenFlow did magnificently. But I soon learned how easy it was to not only do screen captures, but to also edit and create really good looking videos. So let me show you exactly what it means to edit a video. Let's take a sample video and import it into ScreenFlow. Hey everyone, this is my first sample video and it's, and it's going to be incredible. How'd that sound? Okay. I'm so happy to be here. If you are a security guard company and you're looking to improve the quality of service you provide, uh, check out officerreports.com. Okay, using the poll on the left, you're right. What intimidates you the most about the whole video creation process? Again, use the poll. All right, now that the video is shot, we can get it imported into ScreenFlow. Once the video is imported, we have the ability to manipulate it to tell the story that we want to tell. The first thing that we'll want to do is remove any dead air from the video, and then let's remove any bloopers and any other parts that don't sound or look too good. All right, let's go ahead and add the sample video. All right, import it into the timeline, and here we are. Hey everyone, this is my first sample video, and it's, and it's going to be incredible. How'd that sound? All right, not the cleanest video, so let's clean it up a little bit. Hey everyone, this is my first sample video and it's going to be incredible. 
I am so happy to be here. If you are a security guard company and you're looking to improve the quality of service you provide, check out officerreports.com. And that's what we have after our first interview. Second, let's insert an intro video. For a cool intro video, just jump on over to Fiverr and choose an intro video gig. For now, I'll just insert one of my company's intro videos into the sample. All right, let's go ahead and add that video intro. And it's going to be incredible. I'm All right, we've added our video transition. Let's see what it looks like. Hey everyone, this is my first sample video and it's going to be incredible. Now that we've gotten our primary video or our A roll out of the way, let's spice up the video just a little bit. The first way that we'll do this is by adding B roll or supplemental footage used to visually support the A roll. Think of it as video that shows the story. If the A roll narrative talks about dogs, then the B roll might show some puppies. So is B roll really important? It absolutely is. Point blank, period. At this point, I'll let one of my favorite content creators give you a crash course in the importance of B roll. What's up guys, Peter McKinnon here and today we're talking about B-roll, what it is and how you can use it to make your footage and your videos better. What is B-roll? B-roll is alternative or supplemental footage that you can use to cut on top of your main angle. So if this frame was my main angle, I could use B-roll to overlay and cut on top of this shot anything I want to make something more interesting, to tell a point, to bring you in a direction that I want to bring you into, or simply to just cover up the fact that this is my face rambling for the next 10 minutes, because let's be honest, I tend to do that. So to start, as an example, I'm going to use the vlog. A lot of vlogs I start with a cinematic sort of intro, using B-roll shots to kind of tell the mood, portray how I'm feeling that day, where I am, what the weather's like, and it kind of sets the tone for the episode. So let's say I'm gonna go do a photo shoot in a forest. We're gonna start the vlog off in my car, but I'm not gonna use any B-roll. This is what that would look like. What's going on, everybody? We are outside a really cool forest right now that has some awesome light. So we're gonna pack up our gear. We're gonna go inside and shoot, light off some smoke, get some cool B-roll, and yeah, we're gonna go do that right now. Okay, so that was fun. We are freezing. We're gonna get back in the car now and go do something else because it is way too cold outside. The wind is just killing. Okay, pretty boring. Not much substance, not much to look at. Wasn't very much fun to watch. Uh, yeah, just not feeling it at all. Let's see what that looks like again using B-roll. What's going on everybody? We are outside a really cool forest right now that has some awesome light. So we're gonna pack up our gear. We're gonna go inside and shoot light off some smoke, get some cool B-roll, and yeah, we're gonna go do that right now. Okay, that looks a lot better. The problem is I only shot B-roll of us, me taking pictures, my friend taking pictures. You don't really know where we are, what we're taking pictures of, what we're doing at all. I didn't really give you enough information. So that's when we got to shoot B-roll of the environment that we're in as well. Cut those two together, it's going to look like this. What's going on everybody? We are outside a really cool forest right now that has some awesome light. So we're going to pack up our gear, we're going to go inside and shoot light off some smoke, get some cool B-roll, and yeah, we're gonna go do that right now.
fun. We are freezing. We're gonna get back in the car now and go do something else. So that's it guys. That is the crash course in B-roll. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you got something out of it. And I He's just so good at B-roll that I really dislike him sometimes. But with that being said, I'm not nearly the creator that Peter McKinnon is, so I'll usually use sites like Dreams Time or Storyblocks to find B-roll that suits my video. The video purchasing plan for Storyblocks comes in at about $8 per month for five video downloads a month. For a little more, you can get unlimited downloads of video. Depending on the frequency for your content creation, the unlimited plan might be just right for you. So let's add some B-roll now. All right, let's go ahead and grab some B-roll of a security guard. This one looks like it should do. And download that, and we'll go ahead and import that into our sample video. All right, let's go ahead and add that B-roll. All right, now that we have our B-roll loaded, let's see what it looks like. Hey everyone, this is my first sample video and it's going to be incredible. I'm so happy to be here. If you are a security guard company and you're looking to improve the quality of service you provide, check out officerreports.com. And there we go. So now that we have a little B-roll inserted, let's talk about sound design. In my videos, sound design really takes two forms. The music that gets inserted into the video, and two, the sound effects that are used to accentuate the video. When we start talking about adding music to your videos, Please refrain from adding your favorite top 10 songs to your video. Doing so will definitely land you in trouble legally and could get you banned from certain social media sites like YouTube. If you're thinking, no, I'm nobody. The artists will never know that I copied their song. They'll know. Believe me, they'll know. Been there, done that. YouTube in particular has a crawler that scans your videos for copyrighted content, and they will catch you. So unless you have the money to go out and license music from your favorite artists, which I imagine can't be cheap, you'll need an alternative source. The alternative source that I use is Epidemic Sound. I absolutely love this website. Epidemic Sound owns the rights to tens of thousands of music tracks that you can use for your videos. These soundtracks aren't just some hokey, corny tunes that sound like something your seven-year-old niece put together uh, on, on her play piano, okay? And the good news is, a subscription for Epidemic Sound for non-commercial use starts at about $15 per month. So let's go in here and grab a quick track. All right, let's go ahead and grab some music. I uh, feel like some alternative hip hop today. Let's download it. And go ahead and get that inserted into our video. Now that we have our music selected, let's go ahead and insert that into our video. All right, now that we've got our music added, let's see what we have. Hey everyone, this is my first sample video and it's going to be incredible. I'm so happy to be here. If you are a security guard company and you're looking to improve the quality of service you provide, check out officerreports.com. Okay, so now that we have our music out of the way, let's throw in our sound effects. Sound effects can be used to add a little audio bling to your B-roll or your A-roll. Of all the things that uh, you will do to your video, people would notice if you didn't add sound effects, but when you do add them, 
it adds to the uh, kind of overall video experience of your content. I had to check the mic on. So where do we get these sound effects for our sound design? Did you hear the ticking of the clock? That sound design. And I get my sound effects from Epidemic Sound. So not only can you get your music from Epidemic Sound, but you can also get all of your sound effects. For our sample video, let's add a little explosion in the video. Boom. All right, let's find a quick explosion. And we're looking for sound effects. This is the one we want. Let's go ahead and get that inserted. All right, now that we have our little sound effect added, let's see what we have with it all put together. Hey everyone, this is my first sample video and it's going to be incredible. I'm so happy to be here. If you're a security guard company and you're looking to improve the quality of service you provide, check out officerreports.com. Very nice. We've gone through most of what it takes to create your video, but I wanna circle back to, I guess, what could have been the first part of this webinar, set design. Of all the topics we've covered today, set design is probably the easiest one to master. Set design is all about offering your viewers an interesting environment that complements your main focus of the video, which is you. There are just a, a few simple rules that I use for set design. First, clean up the area that you're shooting in. If you're at your desk, take any junk or clutter off of your desk that will be in the shot. Remember, you don't have to declutter the entire room, just what's going to be on camera. And I'm telling you, I would be absolutely ashamed to show you the state of my office or studio for some of my videos. But again, it's not what you can see, it's what the camera can see. Second, if you're not shooting against a plain background, move away from your background. If your three-point lighting is working well, then moving away from the background will put less emphasis on what's behind you and more emphasis on helping you stand out from your surroundings. Good set design will help your viewers focus in on you and not that miscellaneous scrap of paper on your desk. Lastly, add some cool lighting effects if that's your thing. One or two Philips Hue color changing light bulbs or some LED lights will work wonders on your scene. All right, we've gotten through all of the hows. Let's talk about the what's as in what the heck should you be talking about? Generally speaking, if you're posting video to LinkedIn, it's going to be or should be business or professional content. If you're posting videos of your cats, wrong platform, really wrong platform. I guess unless you're in the business of selling cats, I'll have to think about that one. What I found is that the content that is most viewed is content that either uh, answers a common question that exists within your industry, uh, controversial content, or content about some current or relevant event in your industry. When you're developing content ideas, your inspiration might come from anywhere. My ideas usually come from some conversation that I've had with a customer, uh, an industry expert, or an article that I've read somewhere. Here's one idea for you. Do you have competitors in your space? I'm sure you do. So go out and check out the most recent content that they're putting out and look for their most liked video or blog post or whatever. Once you found it, do a video on that content, but put your spin on that topic and distribute it to your network. The other thing that you have to have is a place to jot down all the content ideas that you come up with. Maybe it's the notepad on your computer or smartphone, uh, whatever it is, make sure that you are able to easily access it when you have one of those genius ideas. Note, 
when you add that note, be sure to add as much detail as possible along with the source of your inspiration. I've had a couple dozen genius ideas that went down the drain because when I wrote down the video idea, I wrote down this short five word description. Video about hiring. What is that supposed to mean? Why didn't I add more details? Oh my God. The next tip is make sure that you are posting consistently. When you start to build an audience, make sure that you're uh, not getting them excited for the next installment of your video series. And then it takes you weeks and or months for you to uh, put out your next video. In sales, they say it's easier to keep a customer than it is to find a new one. The same can be said for content creation. It's easier to keep a subscriber than it is to find a new one. The last tip when it comes to video content creation is be authentic. Like my mom has always said, just be yourself. Hey mom. People may be able to copy what you say, but they will never be able to copy the way you say it. If you're quirky, loud, or a natural comedian, let your audience see who you are. People are looking to connect with authentic brands represented by authentic people. Hashtag, I am authentic. Wow, we've covered just about everything that you need to know to get ready to upload that video. So here are a couple of things that you need to keep in mind when you're ready to upload your video. For one, LinkedIn does not support .mov files. I learned that one the hard way after about three weeks of not being able to upload videos. It was a disaster. Number two, the maximum file size that you can upload is five gigabytes, while the smallest file size is 75 kilobytes. Number three, the maximum video duration is 10 minutes and the minimum duration is three seconds. Generally speaking, I try to keep my videos between three to seven minutes I've seen lots of best practices numbers thrown around, but your best bet is going to be trying different length videos and see what gets the best response from your network. If you have a video that's extremely long, think about cutting it to you know a couple of minutes and then uploading that snippet to LinkedIn. And number four and lastly, don't forget to post your videos to the groups that you're a part of on LinkedIn. It's really the easiest way to get engagement and to start building your followers and contacts. So that's my formula for creating better engagement on LinkedIn through video. If there are any questions, please feel free to ask at this time.